What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time we upload a brand new video. If you're watching this on YouTube, go check out the podcast platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, and you can check out the full segments um, in all three uh, of what will be future videos um, if you want to hear them right now, you know, because they are current topics um, and Really, we're looking at a lot of things, Baltimore Ravens, right now. So, you know, in, in these videos, let us know your comments, you know, you know, your thoughts on the roster, your thoughts on the players that we talk about, any takes that you have. We, we like to see those, and we like to talk about them, and a lot of times we bring them up on the live streams. A lot of times we bring them up in future videos, future recordings, and things like that. But, Joshua, let's start off with the big Baltimore Ravens news. In, in the good and the, in the bad direction, let's talk about the new look Baltimore Ravens wide receivers. Um, Duvernay out for the year, uh, broken foot, Sammy Watkins, some call him Sammy Hustle, uh, is back. Oh man, I'll tell you, how can I explain this and say this in the most respectful way? Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson are the same, are the same person. They are literally, um, the number three or number four wide receivers on some of the best teams, but because the Ravens do not really know how to draft wide receivers nor develop them to the way they should be, they will become the number one target for whoever may be our quarterback. Um, I don't, I don't know if they'll activate like the, a Benjamin Victor, a Shamar Bridges, or even a Anthony Isabella. You know, everybody was so hyped because we got a younger, speedy guy. And um, we haven't seen that young of speedy guy at, at the video put on the field at, um, at any point. Instead, we had a 36-year-old Deshaun Jackson who we try to have, you know, run a slant route. But instead of throwing the uh, ball to our 36-year-old wide receiver, we throw the ball straight to the corner, cornerback. So, I mean, um, when you look at this wide receiver core, it's, 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 it's tough. It's tough to um, look at. It's tough to envision how much success this team um, will have, uh, especially since, you know, um, when it comes to our passing schemes and you and you see the bunch routes, they're all bunched up together. No separation, no, 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 no breath, no life, no, 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 nothing. So, you know, I would say the, the wide receiving game, the wide receiving core is pretty damn desperate right now. And um, if this is not a cry for help, I don't know what else is. Something's got to give. We talked about it so many times, but um. Someone's got someone's got to give. Yeah, and <sighs> bunch routes. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we're gonna be using that one for a while. That's good. Um, when you look at this Ravens roster, this is something the Ravens have had a problem with over the last five, six, seven, eight, twenty-five years. Yeah, depth. Um, and it's depth of two positions: it's depth of wide receiver and depth of cornerback. And it's like. Obviously, there's going to be a drop off mm -hmm. from starter to backup. And that's not the complaint the Ravens fans have. The complaint is that, like, our number three guys almost every year are typically pretty bad at those positions. Our three through five is like, uh, yeah, I don't even know if they'd be making the roster on other teams. Right. So, you know, I mean, you look at it last year, Anthony Averett, how much is Anthony Averett playing for? Uh, the Oakland Raiders where he signed. I don't see his name very often. He was out there every snap. And even when we had Marlon and Marcus out there, like Anthony Aver was playing. Yeah. Um, and this year, I think the Ravens did a good job with cornerback depth. I don't want to you know, talk about that too much. We had the injury to Kyle Fuller from day one. And, you know, where it's like, okay, yeah, our slot corner has been worse than what Kyle Fuller was. But at the same time, it's not like we're sitting here every week going, man, Where's Kyle Fuller? If we still had Kyle Fuller, like we used to do with like, man, where's Tavon Young? Like we need a, we need a slot corner. We need all this. That's not the case. Wide receiver, it's so bad. Um, and I, I feel like if you look at the Ravens wide receiver core week one, I feel like it's fine. You know, it, is it the best in the NFL? No. Is it the one of the worst? Yeah, probably. But at the same time, it was it was manageable. It was usable. It could work. Fast forward to when Rashad Bateman goes down, and then you go, oh, the Ravens no longer have a single receiver that can generate separation, mm -hmm. that can consistently get open, 
that can make plays with the ball in the air, what are they going to do? And they already don't have a coach that can scheme receivers open. So that's, I mean, that's already hurting the wide receiver core. And so it's like, okay, now we're rocking with like Duvernay and Demarcus Robinson, which is a horrible number one and two. Those guys are good depth pieces. I have no problem with them as, you know, as a wide receiver two and three, if you have a good number one. But then Duvernay gets hurt and it's like, okay, we're missing our top two wide receivers. And our receiving core has become Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson. And we need them to be able to consistently get open. Not to mention, wide receiver three is Deshaun Jackson. Like, Desha- and I, I have no problem with any of these players. I like these players. I think they're all good at football. I think they're all solid receivers that deserve a roster spot in the NFL. But deserving 60% of the offensive snaps? It's, it's bad when you sign a player that was cut by the Packers when the Packers are seen as having a terrible wide receiver core for their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, and that's why they're failing. <laughs> and Sammy Watkins is behind those guys on the depth chart. <laughs> he wasn't playing behind, you know, he was behind Randall Cobb and two rookies and Alan Lazard. That is the fifth string wide receiver core or fifth string wide receiver on a wide receiver core that was seen as bad. And the reason the Packers were losing was because of the wide receivers. And we got the fifth one and that's our best player. Now that's our go-to guy is the fifth best on a receiver core. That's seen as hurting their superstar quarterback. And we're like, here you go, Lamar. Wide receiver one, the column 1K, Sammy. You know, I, I'm, I, you know, I think I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I don't know who the guy was, but you know, I don't, I don't want to. Um, whoever it was, I saw that TikTok video and they posted it on Twitter. I wanted to give them, I want to give them credit um, for them actually breaking down the passes against that uh, Jacksonville Jaguar game. And you know, everybody can always can always look at the stats, but people don't watch the games. When I, when I say people don't watch the games, people don't actually watch, you know, and see Lamar Jackson or even Snoop, you know, under under the stress that they're that they're that they're under. Um, but we're in this case, we'll we'll talk about Lamar because Lamar actually throws the balls to the receivers. But constantly, every time he does try to, you know, um, wait to see the wide receivers get open and stuff like that, everybody always wonder why he holds the ball too long. That's a, that's. When the last time our wide receiver got got separation, the last time our wide receiver got separation was in week three, and the guys and the guy hasn't been playing. Um, <laughs> if we're being completely honest, um, you know, if I'm if, if, if I'm being if we start taking a step step further, I know we talk about you know the wide receiver room, but my tight end, my tight end is playing like that. You know, that bottom five, top top five is five number uh, number five tight end right now. He ain't playing like the number one. You know, Mark Andrews that we used to know. Just to let them know, and everybody can be in the comments. They can they can attack me. Say, well, you know, he's the only he's the primary receiver. He's gonna be he's gonna be draped in uh he's gonna be draped in uh covered. Hell, I've seen Travis Kelsey men uh draped and covered. You know, since he's been you know technically that number one guy this year, he's still been making things happen. Greatness if, if greatness is in you, you make things happen. Point blank, simple. So I mean, once again, you know, when you look at this wide receiver room, it's looking like yeah. Can we do it? I, and I'll be honest with you, as a range fan, I don't have the shots. I don't know if we can do it with this wide receiver group. I mean, when you take this wide receiver group versus that 2019 group where, you know, Lamar Jackson had that uh, unanimous MVP um, season, that wide receiver group is the is the reason why we didn't advance in the playoffs. How many drops we had again, McConnell? Seven. Seven. You know how many drops we had in that Jacksonville Jaguars game? It was around oh, – it was around five to nine. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was about three touchdowns. It was about three touchdowns. It was dropped too. Demar- it's Robinson, three touchdowns. Mark Andrews and Josh Oliver. Everybody, everybody can say, "Oh, it was a little over." No, they teach you that. They teach you in Pee Wee, high school, college, in the NFL. If you could put your hands on the ball, that's that is a catchable ball. 
And all of them, honestly, were catchable touchdowns. They just didn't bring it in. <laughs> so, I mean, when you look at these new wide receivers, the only way I would attack it is I would attack the sidelines. Put my big bodies in. Use Shamar Bridges. Use Benjamin Victor. They're strong. They're strong on the outside. You can throw the and, – and they know how to uh, – Shield and block off, you know, defenders and actually move the, move the chains. Now, am I, am I, are they going to do it consistently against, you know, some of the starting NFL corners? No. But that does give us a chance to actually, you know, still establish some type of passing game and still have Deshaun Jackson, Demarcus Robinson. You know, they're still speedy guys with the underneath routes. So the bad thing is we're not in the facility. We're not at Owens Mills. And, um, it's going. It's going to fall on deaf ears if you actually try to say, "Hey, we we don't we're not in the best of shape in regards to this passing game. We don't have some of the best wide receivers. We still got to make these guys available." Like I keep on harping on that game against the university. Mm, I'm about to say university. Uh, when we played against the Miami Dolphins uh, the year previously, and damn near everybody was hurt on that offensive side of the ball. They schemed a good enough uh, game plan on the offensive side of the ball. Still come out with a win. They knew who they had on the talent on the side of the ball, talent wise, and they executed their uh, game plan against us. Anytime you see your safety stuck in mud and your and the wide receiver is hauling is hauling tail up the sideline, burning my guy, it's like, hey man, you know, just pull, just pull Doug Peterson. You saw what those guys did against us. Let's let's do a little bit of this against this team. You know, so I mean, it's it's. It's rough. Um, it's definitely going to be intense um, this Saturday. But well, what all can we do? But love this team and uh, try to ride with them. <laughs> yep. You know, you got to watch. You got to be miserable. It's part of being a Ravens fan uh, exactly. in the offensive side of the ball. 